Hey friends, I'm back with chapter six, which is titled More to the Package. One evening, a few days after I had received the Holy Spirit, Alberta met me at the door looking concerned and a little exasperated. Conrad's got a problem, she said. You know, he was supposed to go to a party tonight. Mm -hmm. What's the matter? Conrad, our youngest child, age 12, was scheduled for his first dress-up affair, a supper birthday party at the home of one of his friends. His first real dark suit, white tie, necktie, white shirt, necktie ensemble was the sensation of the week at our house. Well, you know, Con, he got into his new suit early, and then he had to go out and fool around in the yard playing with the cat. Duffy got up in the tree and Conrad tried to get her down and in the process got a small piece of bark in his eye. I got the thing out of his eye all right, but it seems to have scratched his eyeball. I don't think he'll be in any shape for the party. It's hurting him too much. I murmured something sympathetic and then I went down, to hall, down the hall to wash my hands for supper. On the way back, I looked in on the unfortunate Conrad. He was lying on his bed, very glum, with a pad of witch hazel soaked cotton on his eye. Too bad, kid, I said. Without thinking too much about it, I put my hand on his head and I prayed under my breath. And then I came into the dining room and sat down at the supper table. Funny thing, commented Alberta a few minutes later, coming to the table herself after a brief stop in Conrad's room. He's perfectly okay. His eye suddenly stopped hurting him and he's going to the party after all. To confirm her words, Conrad emerged, grinning happily with a beribboned present under his arm. I didn't say anything to Alberta about the prayer, but my own eyes came open a little wider. Healing? Was this part of the package too? At our church, I suppose we must have prayed for at least a thousand people a year to be healed of one ailment or another. We had a special healing service each week on Thursday morning following the communion and from time to time had invited someone or another to conduct a healing mission. It had only been a few months since we had had such a mission with a well-known leader from England. It had been an inspiring week and the man had given some excellent talks on the healing power of God. Hundreds of people had come to hear him and many of them had come to the altar rail for prayer. I'm sure that many of these were much helped and undoubtedly there were healings we did not hear about. But on the last night of the mission, Alberta put into words the question that had been bothering me. It's been wonderful, she said, and I know a lot of people have been helped and encouraged, but she looked at me for a moment. Where are the healings? Then I realized that she, like myself, had been hoping against hope that someone would get up from a wheelchair or throw away his crutches or give some definite sign of healing, such as we read about in the Bible. I used to kneel at the altar rail of the church and ask, Lord, where is the power you promised us? My role is sort of a traffic policeman, determining which people needed more expert help than I was equipped to give and using my psychological training to play the poor man's psychiatrist for those who didn't seem too upset or disturbed had sometimes bothered me. You are too sick for me to help you, Mrs. Smith, so you must go to the doctor. You were too disturbed for me to help you, Mrs. Jones, so you must go to the psychiatrist. Your family is too much of a mess for me to help you, Mr. and Mrs. Brown, so you must go to the family counseling board or to your attorney. That was the way it seemed to go. I had often asked myself, if you are a personal representative of Jesus Christ, why are you just a referral bureau for hard cases? When Jesus met a sick man, he did not say to him, here's my card. I know an excellent doctor in Jerusalem who specializes in your kind of problem. Tell him I sent you. 
when he met the wild man of Gadara, he didn't say, my friend, you need to see a good psychiatrist. I recommend Dr. White down in Jericho. He will not charge you too much for group therapy sessions. No. He dealt with these problems by the immediate power of God, and he told his followers they were supposed to do the same. Go on out, he said. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Throw out evil spirits. There had been times when we had seen that power. Now and then, every year or two, an unmistakable healing would take place. I well recall the time one of our vestrymen was told by his doctor, a good friend of mine, that he had, had, that he had a carcinoma of the throat. The doctor asked me for help in preparing the man psychologically and spiritually for surgery to remove his pharynx. We tried to counsel him, but we also anointed him with oil and laid hands on him for healing. I shall not soon forget the excitement and baffled delight of the doctor when he called me to say, I don't know how to account for it. I know this man had a cancer of the throat, but now he doesn't. I find, by the way, that many times doctors are quicker to acknowledge God's healing power than ministers are. That was a great day, but such days were all too infrequent. Was the little incident of Conrad's eye an indication of what would follow? Could it be that this baptism in the Holy Spirit had something to do with the release of that kind of power? It seemed so. One day shortly after this, Dorothy, a faithful church member, hobbled to the altar rail and asked for prayer. She had broken her hip in an automobile accident. It had healed imperfectly. And the doctor told her she would never walk normally again or without pain. When we laid hands on her and prayed, the hip was instantly healed. That afternoon, her husband, a devout skeptic, called me. Dennis, I don't know what's going on over there, but Dorothy's hip is completely normal. She can move her leg in any direction and without pain. About the same time, another of our members presented herself for prayer. She had an ugly eczema or psoriasis covering her hands. We prayed and I wish I had not looked away for a moment for when I looked back, the unsightly lesions were all gone. The skin was as clear as a baby's. Sometimes it seemed that nearly everyone who asked was healed, and, and why not? Jesus said, These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And the power to heal the sick was not confined to a special group of people, such as the ordained ministry, but it was to be exercised by those who believe. It was very understandable with such things happening that in addition to prayer and praise, a good deal of time at our meetings should be taken to tell what God had been doing in people's lives. Testimony, to use the old-fashioned word, such sharing might go on for an hour or more. I prayed for my daughter's sore throat and it was healed. I burned my hand on the stove and my husband prayed for it. I don't even have a blister, look. And the hand was held up for inspection to the glory of God. It wasn't just God's healing that people were discovering, but also his guidance and his help in other areas. I was out of a job, but God found me a better one. Praise his name. We had been having real problems in our marriage, but God has just cleared it all away. Like we were on our second honeymoon less dramatic and yet in a subtle way more so was the testimony of the person who just stood up with the joy of heaven on his face and said, I just wanna thank God for being so close and so real to me. Jesus said we will be witnesses after we received the Holy Spirit. And sure enough, that's what began to happen. God was becoming so real 
and so wonderful that we wanted to tell others about the joy that had come to us. And the Holy Spirit had set our tongues free to do the telling. We would have testimonies like this. The girl that works at the desk next to mine at the office had a terrible headache. I asked if I could pray with her and she looked at me funny, but she said, yeah, couldn't do any harm. So I prayed for her and the headache went away. She asked, how come? And I told her about Jesus. Now she's accepted him and she is happy as a clam. She and her husband were fighting all the time and were on the verge of divorce, but she told him about Jesus and he's interested. They're coming to our house tomorrow night to talk about it some more. Pray for us, will you? Sometimes nearly everyone in the room had some kind of a report to give. Not what God did years ago or even last year, but what he did last week, yesterday, and today. Since the Bible had come alive to them in a new way, some would share a psalm or other scripture that had been significant to them. Then, with faith built higher by this sharing, the group would plunge back into prayer, singing, and praise.